Welcome to the Digital Marketing News. I'm Tiffany Allen. And with your first story this week, I am Joshua Knight. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, if I were to, say, advertise a product to you on social media, do you think that you would be interested in my product? Maybe. Or how about if I were to engage with you on social media first, as I do on our Facebook page, and yes. then I was like, by the way, Tiffany, I am selling essential oils that you can put into these nice stretchy leggings that you can then apply to your nails. As it, what are some of the other multi... Anyway. I get enough of those? Yeah, you might find, though, that <laughs> if your brand engages with people on social media, that you are more likely to have them be interested in your products and services. That's according to a survey by the amazingly named The Manifest. Go on. <laughs> yeah, not, not The Manifest anything at all, you know, just The Manifest. It's the only one. They did a survey. They found 74% of people follow brands on social media. That's a whole lot. Yeah. Of them, 96% of those interact with the brands on wow. social media. 67% said they have made a purchase. Good for marketers. Yeah. After seeing a social ad. Uh, that is an average, though, across generations. It turns out millennials are most likely to buy. Makes sense. Seventy-seven percent of them said so, and then that percentage goes down every generation. Um, my curmudgeonly folks are like, I don't know, I didn't read about it in the newspaper yet. <laughs> and then the baby boomers are still waiting for the Morse code to translate. So, <laughs> different strokes for different folks is what I'm saying. But the they did show that even in these days of people kind of leaving the Facebooks behind for the snappins and the instas and whatever you kids are doing, they. Facebook is more likely to influence a purchase than every other platform they looked at combined. Makes sense. So bigger than YouTube plus Insta plus Twitter. Mm -hmm. So audiences, of course, are going to vary, but it seems like that is the platform for brand interaction. I would say the moral to all of these statistics is, you know, people like to interact with your brand, be there, be engaging when you are there, uh, help people whenever you can when they have a problem with the brand, and put that paid behind where your audience is. Because if they're seeing social ads, like we were talking about earlier, that means somebody paid for them to be there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's not just Facebook that can influence people on the internet. No, it's uh, influencers, I feel. Yeah. Oh. How did you know? I got it. Ah, you did great. Um, so, a new study from Sidekick of mm -hmm. 641 social media users found that 70% of the people they talk to um, trust influencer opinions more than their real world friends. I mean, have you met my real world friends? Yeah. The influencers do seem to have it together a little bit more than they do. Yes, I get it. I know how that goes. Um, and 78% said they trust influencers more than ads, mm -hmm. which trust in advertising, as we know, decline, decline, decline all day, so that makes sense. But the majority said that real value is the important thing, not whether or not something is sponsored, um, sponsored content from an influencer or what have you, that the quality and, of the content and the product, of course, are there. So would you say that it's time to make sure that influencer marketing is a strategically implemented ongoing part of your marketing mix? Well, yes, I would. I would say that too. Hmm. And I'll keep saying it until somebody makes me stop. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> ah, too late. <laughs> or I could write about it in a blog and I could oh. I could get it indexed with Google and I could hope for some organic clicks from Google to my thing. You could. And then I could segue neatly into a little bit of research from Backlinko. Mm. I love this. Every now and again, these guys do the thing with the Backlinko where they look at just millions and millions of search results to see how search uh, people are behaving with what comes up in the SERP. Yeah. So I think this is amazing. Research is very cool for marketers. They're looking this time specifically about the organic click-through rate. So a mm -hmm. couple of key findings here. The number one results in organic search results, so under all the snippets and stuff, but that still has an average CTR of 31.7%. Nice. Most marketers I know would uh, probably cut off at least like the tip of the pinky finger for that, so not bad at all. Why do you think our hands are out of frame? Exactly. The number, <laughs> well, because of the way that the camera is, but oh, geometry. I, I try to gesture up here. <laughs> anyway, the number one organic result is also 10 times more likely to receive a click compared to a page in the number 10 spot. Mm. That makes a lot of sense. I think keeping in mind that SERPs do change based on each individual's browsing history. So yeah. when we're talking about these positions, they are a little bit relative. Mm -hmm. But a uh, couple of things about how content, what kind of content performs best. I thought it was interesting. Title tags that contain a question mm. have a 14.1% higher click-through rate than title tags that don't, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. Title tags between 15 to 40 characters have the highest CTR. So that is, we've been doing 69 or 70, and so like lopping it off right there. Yep. And containing a question, whew. 
But you can get a little more out of bang for your buck if you put your keyword in your URL. Mm. URLs that contain a keyword are going to have a 45% higher click-through rate. Super cool. Mm. Oh, and one other thing that I think is fascinating, because when we talk about SEO, we try and talk about meta description, and people say frequently doing this with their glasses, actually, the meta description is an index by Google, but it is looked at by the people mm -hmm. who are searching. So pages with a meta description get five to eight percent more clicks than those without. And I would think if your meta description is optimized and super compelling, you punch that up a little bit, I'll bet you can get that into the double digits. Sure can. Better than not having one. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Um, so I have another thing to talk about. Is it a study? It I is love a study. studies. It's all about studies all right. being very studious. Yes, of course. Uh, so a recent study from Uberflip and Heinz Marketing shows B2B marketers and their opinions on content. Well, I have some opinions on content, and I'm a B2B marketer, Uberflip. Where were you? Well, maybe you took it. You don't know. Oh, I could have. Yeah, carry on. <laughs> 82% of respondents say content is important in helping them achieve their marketing goals. Makes but yeah. but what? 48% of B2B marketers say their content is only somewhat effective or ineffective. Oh dear. And effectiveness isn't about the money. Hmm. So one in five respondents who say their content isn't effective admit to spending over 75% of their budget on demand gen. Good lord. Just okay. promoting that content, right? Hmm. It does come down to two key things. What are they? Consistency mm -hmm. and scalability. That Those makes are the sense. two things that matter the most. Is does your audience know to expect your content? Is it consistently good? Is it consistently out on time? Is it scalable so you're not putting a ton of work into every single piece and what have you? It'll make your life easier. Um, this report has so many stats in it, I couldn't fit it into the video, but mm -hmm. I do recommend you check it out on the blog. There's a ton of information in there for B2B marketers, segmented by vertical, like tech, healthcare, and what have you. Or you can check the director's cut of this video, which is an hour and a half long. And uh, we are replaced with big blue cat people, though, so it's, it's kind of cool. It's Monday. Yeah, that's uh, the original vision <laughs> of the director of this video, who is me. Fair. Uh, <clears throat> that actually is part of my demand creation strategy, which is part of my segue into our final story for the week. All right. Yeah. So most B2B marketers, it turns out, are finding success with a demand creation strategy. Turns out if you actually have a strategy for something, <laughs> you've maybe thought about it, you've put some things together, it tends to work. This was a survey from the good folks at Lead Crunch and Ascend 2. Mm -hmm. uh, what we did not find out is what happened to Ascend 1. You don't talk about Nobody's that. talking about Ascend 1. But Lead Crunch and Ascend 2, uh, they surveyed a bunch of B2B marketers, they found out 95% said they considered their demand creation success successful. Right. The other 5% presumably were very jealous of that. 80% uh, <laughs> said that they are acting on their demand creation strategy now. Only 3% said that they did not have any plans to do one of them old newfangled <laughs> demand creation <laughs> strategies. So everybody's on that. Uh, the, their goals for these strategies, the very first thing was improving, I thought this was interesting, improving the quality of leads right. is first. Mm -hmm. Improving quantity of leads is second. So in, your stra in their strategies, they're trying to get better leads before more leads. And I think that's probably the way to go about it. That is. You pay sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know what they found most effective? Uh, no. You I mean, do. Okay. No um, I can see your notes. 60% <laughs> said that email is the most effective. Um, demand creation tactic. Love it. Forty-five percent said video marketing. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then twenty-nine percent said SEO, which without content you have nothing to optimize. So read between the lines on that one. Either way, these are all things that play into market demand, right? So you want to just make sure that you have your audience in mind and you're finding the right people, and you're getting them into your funnel. Mm-hmm. Yes. And that email. It's it's always I love coming back to email because it's that you know. The only thing from the 80s that is still relevant, besides me, Fair. is email. <laughs> Love it. All right, well, that's all the news we have for you this week. We'll be back next week with more digital marketing news. If you need more in the meantime, you can follow me on Twitter at Tiffany underscore Allen or Top Rank at Top Rank. Yep, you can find me on Twitter at Night Rights. That's N-I-T-E-W-R-I-T-E-S. And please do make sure to subscribe to the blog and to the YouTube channel. And I will add, next week we will be at Content Marketing World. Well, I will be. Yeah. You ain't going. Nope. But uh, we will be live blogging sessions. We'll be tweeting up a storm. So follow us to get all those great takeaways. If you're not there and if you are there, come over and say hi. I'll be the big bald guy. Every time. Every time. <laughs> See you next week. Bye now. Bye.